Okay. In the last class, we discussed about the how to write the triplets and uh, how to write the quadruples in the previous class. Today, we'll be discussing about indirect triples. So, indirect triples consists of uh, listing out the pointers to the triples rather than the listing of triples itself. Right. So, we generate with respect to the array which we already have and uh, using that array we work out with the pointers to the location right that location is where we use for the triples in order to represent them so with indirect triples an optimizing compiler can move on instruction by recording the instruction list without affecting the triplets themselves right so looking into the example here we have a equal to b into minus c plus b into minus c okay so he's just asking us to write the indirect triples and uh, we don't need to write down with the tree representation so be specific in your exam if they ask for t structure go write for the tree structure if not whatever the point which he is asking for uh, give your answers only towards the cases so looking into this example here we need to write the triples so make three columns one is with the operant operator argument one and argument two right if it is a quadruples another particular column would have been created in the name of result so right to uh, work out with the right towards the left so as we don't have any priority over here as we don't have any brackets dealing with it so we start solving from right to the left so first thing is i have to represent the instruction all these things will be made in the form of an instruction so in the line number 35 uh, i have the instruction minus c without any argument and it is having have been saved in the address location of zero right the other thing is whatever you generate with respect to the values uh, in the case what you look into kindly update in one particular instruction so any cases or any instruction one after the other it knows where to get the information so the case here is as i said to solve from the right hand side i have to represent minus c in a form of a triples so it's uh, if you want to represent in the triples what is the operator operator is minus right so operator is minus and followed by my argument one is c so that will be there in the zeroth index followed by i have star and b so in the second in the in the first uh, index my operator is here is star and the first argument is b and the second argument is minus c in other words minus c i represent the location using the pointer so this is my zeroth location similarly followed by i have plus and c here but c is again a minus c so generate this again go work out with this minus c in the location of 2 minus c Right. So, try to solve this particular case here. So, that is B star minus C. B star minus C. This minus C was the location of 2. So, represent this particular pointer using this pointer. Next case is I have this as this complete term as 3 now. Right. So, this complete term as 3 and this B star minus C, the complete term is 1. So, it is memory location of 3 plus memory location of 1 so what is the operator here the operator is b plus so it is plus and which is my um, argument 1 argument 2 so one argument 1 is b star minus c which is 1 so that will be represented here with the pointer and followed by 3 is the other argument so here comes the reference followed by ultimately equal to is 
the operator here having the argument one as a and the rest here complete argument value which is in the location four as represented below so a and four will be equal so ultimately the instructions will be having with the location of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 which actually we worked it out. Do we have any issues in understanding this particular example? Kindly let me know in the chat section. Moving on, we will be looking into static single assignment form. How do we write? What do we mean by single assignment form? So here. A single assignment form is an intermediate representation and which facilitates our code optimization. So one thing which you need to understand here is in my case here I repeated many B's right so B1, B got repeated twice and C got repeated twice. So when it comes to the static single assignment form I need to maintain the distinct names. That means if I encounter P or Q or any other values again and again, I represent it in, in the form of a unique value. Got it? So for example, if in case the three address code looks in this form, P equal to A plus B, Q equal to P minus C. Again, P is repeating here and here, again here. So P equal to Q into D. Again, P is repeating P equal to C, E minus P. So Q equal to P plus Q. Which P are we talking about? So is this P and this P same or is this P and this P same, right? In order to tackle with the sta single assignment form, so we call it as a static. Static refers to, we know that it needs to be a single copy. It's a fixed one, we cannot change it. So this P and this P can be the same, right? So P equal to A plus B, okay? This P I'm manipulating with minus C contents. So my value is Q. So this is P1 I can say and this is also P1. So this is again P equal to Q star D. This might be another Q, another P. So calling this as 2. And here this Q and this Q can be the same. So P2 equal to Q1 into D. So again I am repeating with P here. So this P and this P might be different. So it is 3. So this P can be this. So it is can be given as a 2. So Q1 is done, so this might be our second Q, where this P is P3 and the previous Q1 which I am talking about is Q1. And remaining terms are anyhow single and we don't need to give any static values. That's about the single assignment form representation of a given three address code. So the same variable may be defined in two different control flow paths to the program, for example the source program looks like if flag then the condition is x equal to minus 1 else x equal to minus 1 so if flag this is the condition part if this flag is true then you execute this right so if case it is true if it is not you go for the else part this if the condition is a failed condition got it so then followed by y equal to x equal to a so here we try to use different names for x because as you can see here this x is different this x is different right both the x's even though either one might be encountered at any given point of time so either this will be encountered within the condition depending upon the condition or the representation in our source program these x needs to be distinct so we try to give different name or called as a distinct name for the x values so x equal to minus 1 or x equal to 1 so making this as x1 and this x as 2 similarly it here what about the case of this x is it 1 x1 or x2 it depends upon which particular x has been selected that's why we go for the combination function right the next function the next paragraph helps us in understanding that if you use different names for x in the true part and false then conflict arises because which x am i speaking about should be used in x equal to sorry which needs to be used in y equal to x into a got it the next case is this 
static single form um, uses a notation converge convention called as a phi function phi function to combine the two definitions of x so this phi function is working for should i consider x this x value or this x value so ultimately one of the x will be utilized here but because of the same name which have been given here ambiguity arises so let's make this x as 1 and this x as 2 if flag of if flag then x1 equal to minus 1 else x2 equal to 1 so i have two distinct values but the case here is i have another x which is coming back so this is x3 so what will be the value of x3 so this x3 is basically holding the value of x1 or x2 so that's about the phi function here so it is holding either the true value of x1 or x2 i hope you got it so here phi of x1 x2 has the value x1 if the control for flow passes if in case it is if in case uh, it is a true part and the condition of the value x2 will be executed then we we have to understand that the control pass is false so translate the arithmetic expression a plus minus of b plus c into a syntax tree of quadratus this is the next example so anyhow i hope you people understood here so x3 is one particular value which is depending on x1 as well as x2 phi will be taking or x3 will be taking the value of x1 if it is a true condition and it will be holding the value of x2 if it is a false condition got it so looking into the next example in my in your exam you might be encountering in this form your questions might be arising in this form where it just gives you an equation a plus minus of b minus c you have to write the syntax tree quadruples triples and the indirect triples basically combining all the terms here and working out so how do we write the syntax tree here anyhow this is a bracket and i can't take minus so it will be a plus which will be my header node so i have plus here plus left child is a and right child of plus is b plus c and which is minus so it will be minus of it will be minus of plus left child of plus is b and right child of plus is c so this will be your syntax tree got it so here the next form is quadruples so how do we write the quadruples quadruples in the sense we have four columns right so representing one for the result one for the operator symbol one for the operator symbol and one for the argument and one for the argument too right so this is how the quadruples here look like what is the equation here a plus so let me write here a plus a plus uh, minus of b plus c so a plus minus of b plus c is what the value is so let me start with the term of plus here oh before that we have to go with the brackets because of the board mass rule so b plus c within brackets so result is some t1 operator is plus argument 1 is b argument 2 is c so plus b c t1 the next case is minus of this t1 so minus of t1 which will be present in the index of 1 so next is the plus operator left argument is a right one is t2 and the result completely will be sold in will be stored in t3 so in the location of 2 so that's about the quadruples triples is simple we just neglect the result so b plus c will be there with the operator plus left child is b and right child is c the second case is minus of this complete term so minus of whatever the complete term is in zeroth location so make use of the address so the next next thing is uh, with respect to the equal to so here um,
So T3 is equal to A T2, um, A, A equal to T2, I think this was plus here, so there was a small mistake, it's a plus value, kindly make any changes. So this was the plus symbol all right so, okay so i'm actually adding a with the the complete term of one location right so that's about the term here so this is the quadruples triples and the other one which the examiner is asking might be with the indirect triples which we represented now so indirect is where we don't take the consideration here with this we go with the instructions with the values of this so first uh, we had a plus minus of b plus c b plus c will be in zero and minus of uh, b minus c b plus c so that is minus of zero it's contained here and here it is plus so a plus with the addition of the contents of one so that's about the indirect uh, triples here moving on uh, we have a translation of expression which can be asked as a definition here an expression with more than one operator like a plus b star c would translate into instruction with almost one operator per instruction and the array reference of a of ij will expand into the sequence of three address instruction that calculate an address for the reference and which goes in this way the following syntax director okay this is um, about the operations within the expression so we have uh, one particular example which deals about the complete term of operations with the expressions completely. So question can be asked in this way, define quadruples, triples, single, static single assignment form, right? So quadruples, triples and SSCA. So for the example here is A equal to B star minus C plus B star C. So first thing he is asking for the quadruples, so four columns. So four columns in the sense, I have operator, argument one, argument two, result. So starting from the right hand side here, this minus C will be in zeroth location. So minus of C, which I save it in the result T1. So T1 equal to minus of C. Next is B star minus C. So B star T1, saving it in T2. So here, this is one term. This is my T1. So this term is, uh, sorry this is 0 this is uh, saving it in 1 and uh, the result will be saved in T2 so this is T1 and this is T2 next is minus 3 this is T3 and B star minus C is T4 ultimately T4 and uh, T2 will be added with the result of t5 so a equal to t5 well, ultimately this will be the quadruples example at triples having only three fields are called as triples looking into the case we neglect the result anyhow so minus c is the first one b star minus c is the second one with the location so this is zero this is one this is two this is three Ultimately, addition of these two will be the 4. A equal to 4. A is equal to 4. Next case, writing down the SSA. SSA, as I said, we need distinct value. So first, with the example of um, the case. Okay, this is just an explanation, I guess, with the same. Um, so developer SDD to produce direct cycle graph expression with the DAG for the expression of this. Uh, I think we have previously looked upon this. Let me um, look into it quite fast. So it's tending to, if you have these many terms anyhow, uh, plus will be the my new node and this will be the left child and this will be the right child. For will be assigned for this node ultimately, right? So if you didn't understand this SDD, kindly look into my previous videos. Uh, you'll be getting the complete outcome of it so creating a DAG here DAG here for which one example in this example a plus a star b minus c plus b minus c star d even this example is also explained in the previous video 
of the getting the DAC. So these are the important questions, two questions which have been repeated a number of times uh, with this particular topic.